Hi, so this is Alpha Axa. This is the 1987 Spiel des Jahres, that's the Game of the Year award. And uh, this particular edition is by F.S. Schmid. So the Spiel des Jahres, if you're not familiar with that, it's basically regarded as the best um, Game of the Year kind of awards there are in the uh, in the world. And it's uh, most prestigious. Most people tend to uh, really like their games, myself included. And uh, basically the criteria is particularly around basically having a game that is high replayability, easy to play, easy to teach, and pretty accessible. So games like Ticket to Ride, which this game is quite similar to, but um, it did precede it by a number of years. So it's a pretty big map. Everything is just in shots. As you can see, there's nothing else just above that bit there. Down the bottom, that is as far as it, get down as it goes. I could bring this back slightly, and you'll see that we're not missing off anything else. It's as far down as you need to be aware of it. So I'm just gonna move it back up and to let you see some of the things that's all we'll need to really see in shot. So it's a game whereby we're looking to take trucks. These are what these trucks look like, they're beautiful. Um, one truck is enough to show you what's going on. I played blue yesterday. Let's go with, um, I think pink stands out the most, or green. Well, green is like uh, a new edition. So this is the first edition. This is the original edition. You can get the Schmidt edition. There's a second edition and there's some sort of fan made ones as well. So everybody takes 5,000 money. This isn't paper money, this is card money. So you take 5,000 each, but you don't take it like that. It's easy if you just take it this way. So you take one, two, three, four, five, and then five ones. So each player gets this. It's a game for two to six players. It takes about an hour. So you take that money. And I'll explain firstly what we're going to lay out. These are going to be cards, which are basically tickets. These are routes we're looking to complete. So you put down, based on the number of players, cards here. Now, only a couple of these in shot, so we don't need to put the rest down. But um, basically, there'll be a total of 12 extra cards. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there's four things on display. You can see two visible here. There's going to be another two over here. And they're going to be cars that we can purchase. In addition, there are these ones to get too. So let's make sure that's kind of visible. Let's leave it there, I think, is kind of handy. Or that's kind of in shot there. So basically, you'll be, you can take these cars um, when you reach these destinations. And you'll be bidding on them. I'll explain that in a minute. When these cars go, they get replaced. Now, an example, like I said, there's 12 cars in a two-player game. It varies paints on how many people are playing. Once all these cards have come out and then been bought, the game will end as soon as somebody has completed all the tickets that they've got in their hand. So these kind of cards, because everybody also gets three each. So I'd get these three as an example. Once somebody's completed all their cards, then the game will end immediately at the end of that round. So I have these cards here. I can choose where I want to start, but let's see where which destinations I have. So I need to get from Milano, which is down the bottom here, up to Wien, which is over here, that's Austria, and that's Vienna. We have Straubrücken to Innsbruck, which again, I know Innsbruck is over in Austria. As you can see, it's not just Germany we're dealing with here. And uh, Straubrücken is over here. And finally, we have Rotterdam to Salzburg. So Rotterdam is um, over this way. Let's see if I can just grab it again to Salzburg. I know Salzburg is there and Rotterdam is, yes, over here. So trying to get to these different locations. This game is designed, by the way, by Wolfgang Kramer, so um, the most prolific uh, Game of the Year award winner. He's won it five times now. So he's also made games such as a Six Nymphed, he's made Palace of Carrera with Michael Kiesling, a number of games, the Mask Trilogy as well, which is Takao. You've got uh, Java and I wouldn't say Torres, but there's another one that trilogy range, I believe. So we have, um, as an example, we're going to say we're starting in Rotterdam. You basically can start in any city. Although when you start off, you've got to start in these intermediate points. So we're starting here, and then we're going to think about going to Rotterdam. When we get to um, Salzburg, then we'll get some money. The money, by the way, being a very old game, because this game is uh, 34 years old at time of recording, I think even more than that now, um, what you'll be getting is um, Deutschmarks. So when I reach Rotterdam on my turn, there's going to be a die in play and it's going to dictate how far you're going to be rolling. So you're going to roll a die and I'm going to get a four. So I'm going to go up to four positions. One, two, three, four. And draw a hazard, which I'll come on to. Or one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to go to Rotterdam. 
I then end my turn in Rotterdam, and now I can fulfil um, what I need to do here. So I'm picking up two bits of goods. These two is what's listed there. And I pick up two black blobs, which you basically leave out on here. Just leave a few out, but you'd have the whole set up normally. Take two of them, and you stick it in your little wagon. They go face up. The reason they go face up or um, vertically is because you need to be storing at most six. So there's two. And then if I happen to go somewhere else and get some more stuff, two is usually the lowest thing I've ever seen. Normally you can go up to, I think, five, four or five. So you've got four in there now. It's mildly fiddly, but there's a way that you can actually handle it quite effectively. So there he's going to be in here. And I've now got two items. Someone else takes their turn. As an example, then I'll be rolling and I go three. I'm looking to get down to Salzburg. So I'm going to go say one, two, three. Now I could be thinking of going to these other destinations. So if I went this way, I could be going to Starbrocken, picking up four items and I've maxed out my truck. And now I can then go on to Innsbruck. The reason why I might want to do that is if I'm trying to get to Salzburg. So now that I've been to my destination, this is visible. Normally that card is hidden until you reach that destination. But now every other player knows exactly where I'm looking to go to. And they could block you. I'll come on to blocking in a moment. But I've over here, I'm thinking maybe of trying to get some extra thing on my way down here for some reason. So if I want to get extra items, when I reach a place that I'm stocking up, what I can do is buy an extra piece of wagon for 2,000, you won't get this money back at the end. It's like sunken money, or you can get 3,000. So if you're paying 2,000, you're gonna get spaces for four extra bits in here. Or if you're getting the 6,000 one, you can get six extra pieces. You can get as many of these as you wish. And what you do is you've got to empty these first before you move into these ones. It's also easy to take them off, which is quite handy. So these are things that are gonna be valid and visible until they go. And finally, we're going to talk about these hazard cards. So if you're happening to be going along and you go, meh, I want to risk it, land here. It's a bit like chance in um, Monopoly. You can have a positive or a negative effect. It might say pay for 5,000. It might say discard your goods. It might say move to Milan or move somewhere or do something different. So that is what these cards are all around. And it could be positive or negative effect. I'd say that's likely more likely to be negative but it's a risk for you going that direction. So imagine I've now reached a destination. I will then, like I said, claim the money. I claim 2,400 or whatever it is, and now that's been jettisoned and gone off when I've reached, say, Salzburg. So you take rid of the stuff, and you've still got the stuff to go to the other destination. Now, if somebody happens to either on their way there, or maybe once you can please do your tickets, you then happen to land in, say, well, let's say Hanover, because two Hanover tickets are there. Great example, you can only have a bid for one of them. So imagine we're going to bid on Stuttgart. Maybe it complements tickets we have either in our display, ready to complete. Once you complete them, just move them off to the side. You're then going to bid, if you wish to, on this card here. So you want to take on this um, freighter, this delivery, and you're going to bid 400 initially, say. If someone else bids 800, you can say 1,200. So each time you're increasing your bid, you're diminishing the amount you're going to get back proportionally. So you're going to get 2,800 when you get it back. But if you're bidding, say, 1,200, you're going to get a net difference of 1,600 back. So it doesn't really need this. I think that's overkill. But crucially, yeah, you're looking to um, be aware that as you increase your amount you're going for, you're not going to get a bigger return. And what I've done before is deliberately made people have very little money so that I've ended up taking these cards. And um, the risk is, of course, well, I don't even need them or I spent a fortune and I might not even complete them. But each time you get a card, you're going to, of course, get more things. And unless you've got the space, then you need to make sure you're buying the, the space them too. <clears throat> So the game continues until there's no cards left to pick up. And as soon as everyone's played all the cards that are in their hands, so you could go for a quick game and just complete a few cards, but you've got to be aware that there have got to be no cards left there. That triggers into the game. Now, one thing about slowing people down, is so if you roll a one, you can block somebody. So to block somebody, you're going to be taking one of these uh, little stop markers I'm just trying to find. And it's inside the box, let me just show you. 
and you're basically saying, look, I do not want you to cross this route. So basically saying Stau, which kind of means, I think it's a common traffic kind of signal noise thing. You're taking them out and you are blocking them from going a certain way. So until one is rolled again, that person cannot go that particular route. So it's a bit annoying it's a clear background. But if you think they're going to go, say, to Starbrooken, you might do Stau down here. And it means that nobody can go past that. If someone's here and someone's here, you can roll a two, say, and go over them. But if they roll a one, you can't land on the same space as somebody else, including cities. Now, there's another thing in here which is similar, but it's mentioned on one of those um, hazard cards. So that is that done as well. Um, so now moving on to what I think of the game. At the minute, I'm ranking this pretty highly. It's kind of like an 8 out of 10. I think it's a really nice uh, game. I can see why it won Game of the Year. I do enjoy Ticket's Ride, and I think this is a really nice um, way of playing. In terms of the how close it was, I thought I was doing really, really well. And in fact, the score was only 600 marks in it. Uh, considering the score was in the 18,000s, it was remarkable how close it was. I thought I'd go early, get myself a cart, and the other person got a cart a lot later on. Um, but I was just buying so many tickets, and even though I, I did okay, um, in fact, I did very good efficiencies, it just turned out that, um, you know, I was maybe I was deliberately making them bid high. I was also bidding high to make sure I got them too, and maybe bidding on things that, uh, you know, maybe not needed. But it went to show how close it was, how much fun it was as well. Um, but there's plenty of different cars to go for. Um, the hazard things, my tactic was to, to try and avoid anything that led me getting a hazard, um, just so that I didn't have to worry about the risk of what could come up. But um, no, it's been a lot of fun to play. And I said there's another variant, which or version, which is um, has two dice. Um, this one, I like the colouring as well. I think it's nice and clean. I love the front cover of the box. It's one of my favourites of any game. It's just this kind of, yeah, literally um, Transformers kind of transporter style thing, and I just find it really effective. Um, the place you go to, I think there's a little bit of bidding involved. Um, yeah, I, I, I've got nothing against this game, really. It's, it doesn't feel too long. It hits that kind of hour mark, which is kind of what you want. And yeah, it's only one-sided, but that's fine. Um, I haven't tried it as anything other than two at present. Um, but if you do ask in the comments, I can be updating you with how things have uh, changed as I've played it at different player counts. It's a classic old style box, which is uh, it's one of those things. And yeah, it's uh, older than a number of gamers are these days. So this is Alf Axa, and yeah, it talks about freighting and money and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I've got a few games of this of this size of this uh, old school box, and um, yeah, really like I said, we really love the look of the box. But as it plays, it's also really good. So it's almost one point five kilos, one thousand four hundred sixty eight. So if it seems fitting that uh, to haul something around this makes a lot of sense. But if you have any questions, please ask those. I uh, hope you haven't made any mistakes. If I have, please let me know. Um, please hit the like button if uh, you like this video. And please hit subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, lots of videos being recorded at the minute. So I look forward to bringing to you first. Uh, more games on the way. Fun enough from Poland. Um, I've got the shipment coming. So I've been following that daily with the updates. So thanks very much for watching. And I'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.